Was this YouTuber murdered? Gabby Petito, a YouTuber doing van life, was reported missing. It's an interesting story. You don't want to miss it. And we'll jump into that in just a little bit. But first up, people, let's talk about today's news. And what is today's news topics? Well, we have some news that's kind of a bit on the somber note. Norm MacDonald died at 61 after a nine-year battle he was keeping secret with cancer. I found a lot of uh, different footage of him talking about, about death and about cancer and all this other stuff on the internet. And it's really kind of telling that maybe he knew this was coming or had an idea that maybe he did. You know, maybe he did know a little bit that this was a possibility. So ultimately, he was trying to keep this battle a secret to kind of spare the audience but at the same time he's been making fun of that fact potentially for the whole time i don't know it's really kind of a strange thing with him right now with all the people giving well wishes and and uh tributes all over and then there are these people doing these uh videos showing him on different shows talking about that type of stuff i don't know what to think i was i was not the massive norm mcdonald fan but i but i did find him funny and he is gonna be missed let me know what you think in the comments about Norm MacDonald and his nine-year battle with cancer. Were you shocked? Uh, have you watched him? Were you a fan? I want to know. And our next topic. Rolling Stone has named Aretha Franklin's song, Respect, the greatest song of all time. Talk about respect. That's all we got for that one. But, <laughs> come on now. That's funny. Respect has been named the greatest song of all time. That, my friends, is indeed respect. Now, Nicki Minaj, on the other hand, is in the news because apparently she's telling people that her cousin's friend had a very strange symptom after getting the shot. Um, the vaccination shot. And that's, it's kind of weird because, because now it's all over the media. You can look up what this um, effect was. I'm not going to mention it here. It's just the only reason we're talking about it is it is all over the news. And celebrities are indeed part of fandom. Now, the health department at, in the area that the cousin's friend lives in actually went on record as saying that this was false information, that no one in that area, no one had reported any such effect, which is, which is disturbing um, because if she knows about this, that means he told her, and then what, what of this, I mean... But they also went on to say that they searched and it wasted an entire day trying to search for this person. 
And since no person had come forward saying they were having any such problem, and believe me, it's the type of problem you would have gone to the hospital for, I hope. Um, you can look it up. Like I said, very embarrassing situation. We will not be uh, talking about it on here. I just wanted to let you know that despite what Nicki Minaj says, the health department said it was a waste of their time. That they wasted an entire day going through records, trying to find a person who came in the hospital with that symptom. And it's just crazy. That whole thing is crazy. This has been one of those weeks, which, of course, will bring us to our next topic, which is Gabby Petito. Gabby Petito has a YouTube channel about van life. Now, this 22-year-old girl disappeared on August 30th. She was last seen in Grand Tenton, in Grand Tenton, National Park in Wyoming. Now, normally I wouldn't be talking about this type of thing on this channel, as this is a fandom type of channel. However, I will talk about it because fan life is kind of a fandom within itself, I suppose. And plus, it's a YouTuber, so that also is important to people who are enjoying YouTube videos. So, why is this case so weird? Well, after she was reported missing, well, she after she disappeared, I should say, on August 30th, the boyfriend, Brian Landry, a age 23 drove home back to back to their place their primary residence in Florida on September 1st without her now this is strange because he also did this in her van the van belonged to her, apparently, not to them. From everything I understand, the van was hers. So the, so the past few days have been crazy because now, 11 days later or so, the family reported her missing. The boyfriend, Brian Landry, has said absolutely nothing about the situation, refusing to tell people where the last time he saw her was. Now, that's crazy because now the family's wondering. They're trying to find out where she is, what happened to her, and all they want is their daughter back. It gets weirder because a few days before her disappearance, apparently there was a disturbance reported and 911 was called. They came and there was body footage of the whole situation. And you can look it up online. I won't post it here for reasons it's body cam footage and i don't feel comfortable doing so especially when all the news sites on youtube have it for you to watch but the body cam footage is from moab utah and it shows the couple trying to trying to talk to cops apparently Apparently, she had a manic 
episode and they had some difficulties. Um, police were called and there was a whole body footage thing. The police asked her if he hit her. Uh, she says no, he did not. However, he put his hands on her face after she had hit him. Uh, it sounds like hitting to me, but we don't know the situation. We don't know what happened. So we really can't say. Now, no charges have been brought against the boyfriend yet. And no real clues have been found in the case that have been reported by the police. The police, in fact, actually talked about it. And the one police officer said that while the boyfriend is a suspect in this disappearance, that basically he's in his rights to not say a word about it. They can't do anything about him not talking about it. I don't know. To me, if he drove home in her van, that would be the number one thing as her parents that I would be doing to get him to talk. I would be, I would be filing... Um, a theft on that van to get him to have to go in. I mean, sure, they know where the van is because he literally drove it home, but he drove it home without her. I think if it was me, I would try to find a way to get him to have to answer some questions. But again, the situation is really, really strange. But wait, it gets stranger. So why does it get stranger? Well, it turns out that some newlyweds, Crystal Turner, 38 years old, and 24-year-old Caitlin Schultz were found shot to death at a campground southeast of Miab on August 18th. Five days after they were seen leaving a downtown bar. Now, why is this important? Well, well, that is where the police were called for the 911 body cam footage that is all over online. Somewhere in that general area is where Gabby Petito and her boyfriend, Brian Landry, had a fight. Now, they have said that the couple had complained about a creepy guy who was making them feel uncomfortable in their campsite a few days before the homicide. So they were at the same campsite as Brian Landry, Brian Laundry, and and Gabby. They were at the same campsite complaining about a creepy guy who was making them feel uncomfortable. Now, they're saying that in that investigators think an outside party shot the women and then fled the area. However, they have not ruled out the possibility that somehow these two cases are indeed linked. It is strange that they were in the same area at the same time. And now these two women are dead and Gabby is missing. So in regards to this body footage camera, yo, know, 
this body footage that you can find online, it pretty much says that the male, which would be Brian, tried to create distance between between Gabby and himself by telling her to take a walk to calm down. She didn't want to be separated from the van and began slapping him. He tried to grab her face and push her back. And then he proceeded to lock her out except for that his side of the door was, his side was open. She forced her way in to the vehicle and then um, kind of made them wreck. So they had a little bit of a wreck and 911 was apparently called. This, this, seem to be kind of a mental or emotional health breakdown more so than a domestic assault is what one of the police officers said. Then, you know, they're looking into the possibility now, however, that these two cases might be closer linked than we think. So Thursday night, a statement was made by Brian Landry's lawyer where he said in the statement that any connection to the two cases will be determined at a later date. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait just a minute there, friends and family. Brian Landry's lawyer says that any connection between the two cases will be determined at a later date? Even that sounds a little bit off to me. And law enforcement actually has to uh, follow whatever protocols they need to follow. They can't just go in and arrest the guy and he's perfectly within his rights not to talk about it. But the whole thing to me seems really crazy. It seems really weird. If you would like to hear me talk more about it, let me know because the last of been the last official thing that we know was that they left a hotel in Salt Lake City, Utah, about 230 miles away from Miab on August 24th and were heading to the Grand Teton National Park, then eventually Yellowstone. So the last verbal conversation, the last conversation that um, that Gabby's mom had with her was on August 25th, where they were apparently in Grand Teton. Landry or Laundry then um, returned home without her to to Northport where the couple's trip began. He returned on September 1st in her van without her. Now, here's the thing. The mom said that she believes the text was not from her daughter. Now that we know the ban was in Florida on the 1st, she states, there is no way that that text was from her daughter. Yeah. 
Wow. So after the daughter was reported missing on September 11th, the band was recovered from Landry's parents, from the home of, La of Landry's parents the same night. Laundry has retained a lawyer, but hasn't spoke on the case at all, hasn't given any information. What do you guys think in the comments below? And would you like to see me continue to cover this case? It's a bit of a weird thing that I wouldn't normally do, just this is one of those really strange things. So if you'd like to see me continue to cover this as we find out more information about it, definitely let me know in the comments below. So that's where we're going to end today's video. So, so if you like this video, leave a like. It really helps. And leave us a comment as well because youtube really tends to like it when we have a conversation and we like to hear from you now also then i also want to say hit that subscribe button because miko wants more subscribers and you don't want to disappoint miko and hit that notification bell so you know when we do our next video. A portion of all profits from this channel will go to Tourette's research and then probably some other causes as well because we want to make the world a better place one video at a time. That being said, be safe out there and remember at the end of the day, fandom is family.